Hey everyone, I'm Windfall Drifter, and in this video we're going to be looking at Ease3D, and I'm going to be showing how I set up uh, an animation in Core. Before we get started, we'll need to go and find Ease3D in Community Content. And you can import it if you don't have it in your project yet. If you don't see it right away, you can click on Core Content. And I like to drag it into the hierarchy just to bring it into the scene. Once you do that, you'll notice in Project Content, there'll be a new imported content section with Ease3D in it, and we'll be ready to go. So now that we have Ease3D uh, available in the imported content, we can delete the instance that's in the hierarchy and we can go ahead and create a new script. This is going to be our animation script. We'll call it Easing Animation Demo. And now we can go and start adding some custom properties to the script here in the project content before we even bring it into the hierarchy. Before we add those custom properties, let's add the object that we will be animating. I'm gonna use a bottom aligned cube and I'm going to start by putting the position in the world at 500 uh, positive in the X, just to kind of get it out of the way from the default spawn point. Some other settings I'm going to change right off the bat. I'm going to go ahead and turn off game collision, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn off camera collision. When we're animating things using Ease3D, these are going to be in a client context, and collision should be off uh, by default, in those contexts, I personally like to go through and just make sure that collision is in fact off. And I like to go ahead and throw a new material, just a basic material on there to get started. Now that we've added our object, we can go back up to project content, select my scripts, and we can select our script to start adding those custom properties in the project content before we even take it into the hierarchy. Now to add our properties to our script, we can start by adding Ease3D. This will be an asset reference to the Ease3D script that we just pulled from community content. Next, I always add duration. This is a float, so this is going to be uh, a number. Uh, this number is going to be how long uh, the animation is going to last. Next, we'll add a core object reference for the object that we'll be easing. For now, I'll just go ahead and put target because this is going to be kind of an example. Usually, my animations have multiple pieces, and here I would add those object references to anything that's going to move. And for everything that's going to move, we're going to need a vector 3 position if the target's going to be moving uh, in the world. Some objects only just rotate, so we'll want to put um, target rotation. This is going to be a separate type of property. Uh, it's not going to be a vector 3. And finally, I don't do this too often, but we will show it off. We're going to do a vector 3 for the scale of the object. Uh, right now we can only scale uh, equally in the x, y, and z axis. Now that everything's set up, we can start thinking about what our animation is actually going to look like. Maybe we'll go ahead and have our cube move up in the z-axis uh, while spinning around. It'll do a 360 spin, and we'll have it scale up uh, evenly while it does that. This will be kind of a uh, maybe a reveal of some kind, some uh, item or reward or pickup that is moving and spinning and scaling. Our next step is to put our cube in a client context. We can right click on it, put it in a new client context. And that's one of the more important steps for using easing animation. Um, this is a kind of animation that's not going to work on the server um, or anything that requires collision as we see that client context has collision forced off. Go ahead and rename this to uh, animated cube. And so these kind of animations are really good for something that 
collision is not a, a factor. So this will be a client side script. We'll drag the script into the hierarchy as a child of that client context. And we'll see all those custom properties that we set up are now empty fields ready for us to input whatever we want. Um, this is the benefit of setting all those up before we bring them into the hierarchy. That instance will always have those fields. We can start dragging in ease3d. We can connect our cube as the target of our animation. And we can start inputting some values just to test. Again, the strength of this is that if we know what we want to do, we can start putting values in and then adjust very easily without having to do a lot of messing around in the code. Um, we can start by putting in some values for where it will go in the z-axis. We can put 200 to start. We know 360 degrees is going to give us our full spin. And we can increase the scale slightly. We can also go ahead and put in the starting duration. And we can adjust if it's too fast or too slow once we get started. Now before we get started on our script, let's go ahead and open up Ease3D real quick. The main thing that we're going to be looking for here that can cause a lot of headache if you're not ready for it is that we need to make sure that the script that we're going to be writing requires that custom property Ease3D. I'm not really sure what the difference between script get custom property and require script get custom property uh, but as long as we have that require our easing animation will work. Now to finish the setup of our script to get our local variables in there we can go over to our script in the project content and beneath our custom properties there's some code that we can copy and paste into our script. We won't need the ease 3D at the top there Notice how it defaults to just get custom property. We already have the require in there. So we can just copy and paste these variables. Uh, for some reason, they add prop at the front in core as a default. I like to go ahead and remove those. Um, and I'm currently using VS Code, which has been a real game changer. So once we've got our local variables all set up, I like to start by making a function and calling it whatever that particular animation is going to be. We'll say this is a, a reveal. Um, you know, this cube is going to pop up and uh, do its spin and scale up. So we'll call it reveal. Um, and when this function is called, it'll play this animation. So we could potentially set up multiple different animations uh, in this script and call them at different times later on down the line. So setting it up like this will make our lives easier later on, even if we're just doing this as a demo. Um, so once we have that function, we can just, you know, if we're going to hit play, we can just do a quick task wait, just wait a second, and then um, we will call this function. So whatever we put in that reveal function there between the function and the end, whatever animations we put there, we'll play. Now that we've structured our script, we have our function set up, we can go and start filling in the actual lines of code that will run the animation. So if we look back at the Ease3D, inside that readme there's a bunch of easing equations uh, linear, quadratic, all the way down to bounce, and then we have three different directions, in, out, or in, out. And when you structure them like this in your animation function, it will result in an animation. So we can start by just taking this example line for easing the position. Uh, we can copy that and take that back over to our function or reveal, paste it in. And this is where, once I realized you could structure it like this, uh, this is where it starts to get really fun because we just start filling in the blanks with our local variables. So 
the object that we're going to be animating is our target. So we can just copy paste there our goal what it's going to be moving to since this is the position will be target underscore position our duration will just be the duration of our uh, we put it in our custom properties those three seconds um, and now for the easing equation and the direction we can just go in and choose one to start with we're going to start with the basic linear equation. So this will be uh, this will be the same result if we used a standard move to in core. Um, this is just point A to point B with no slowing down, speeding up. This is this is not going to look. <laughs> um, like what we're going for, but this is just to kind of show the distinction between a standard move and an easing move. And we'll go ahead and use the in-out easing direction, uh, even though we won't see it on the linear movement uh, to start with. All right, so we've got our script ready to go, ready to test this first part of the animation here, moving the target to the target position. Uh, with linear equations. So we can test it out. Let's see what happens. We have our task weight and then yep linear motion up to 200. Um, it's smooth motion for sure but there is no easing in or easing out and we can really quickly show what this is all about by going here and replacing linear with we'll do sine. Sine is the lowest kind of curve, smoothest curve that is still an easing function. So if we play now, oh, see that's what it's all about, man. So even just a little bit of sine. Uh, curve added to this motion means that it slows down when it's or you know starts slow, speeds up and slows down again when it reaches the top. Um, oh, that's what it's all about. So now we can go through and add the rotation and the scale and see what happens. We'll go ahead and just use sine for both of those as well. All right. Now I'm pretty lazy when it comes to doing this especially if it's a really complicated animation so what I'll usually just do is copy and paste uh, these whole lines uh, and just go through and change what needs to be changed so our position will change to uh, rotation for this second line we'll switch to scale for our third line here and then we'll just take our custom properties our local variables here and fill in the blanks uh, rotation scale, all of these have already been set. It'll still be duration, uh, it'll still be side and in out, so we are ready to test again. All right, so we're ready to test full animation with position, rotation, and scale all firing at once. I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> so I'm not even going to try and test linear with that. That looks really good. Um, so now that we've got it working, it looks really good. Um, if we wanted to say change some values, let's change it, make it go a little higher. Let's make it spin a little bit more. you can instantly start putting in values, right? So we swapped 200 to 300 there, made the six, uh, the, the 360 to 720. Let's scale it up to 1.5. So being able to adjust those on the fly is the reason that I set this up this way. Um, 
we can also look at some different easing equations real quick before we're done. I know this video has gotten a little longer than I had planned, but you know I'm glad that I got to walk through all the steps. This is what I do for every setup, and I've, I've taken a lot of time to try and get it a little bit more um, organized over the last few months, and I'm very happy with how it looks now. So, so now we've changed it to a cubic easing equation. So this is just going to look a little bit different. There's a little bit longer time before it starts speeding up. It reaches its peak and slows down a little bit longer as well. Um, so you can start messing around with any of those easing equations, plug them in. I am going to put this script on CC. Uh, you'll be able to find it if you search Windfall Drifter uh, Animation Demo. I really hope you enjoyed this. This is one of my favorite things to do in Core is animate, so I hope to be making more videos like this. Um, and if y'all are interested at all in more animation, again, find me on Core, Windfall Drifter. I'm on Discord as Windfall Drifter as well. And uh, yeah. thanks for watching.